Success Code. Let's get it. Ready? Welcome to the Success Code, where Roy Red provides interviews, discussions, strategies, and talks to help broaden your perspective on your road to cracking the Success Code. Success Code. Right, guys i'm super excited i promise you guys that as i build my audience i'll bring some real cool people on here and today we have a athlete athlete i always call myself an athlete and I always say train like an athlete not like a buff but like a buff person but we have a real athlete today uh gia and i don't want to butcher your last name trevis i hope i said that right gia you yeah uh, hi guys, I'm Gia Trevisan. Um, I'm an Italian track and field athlete, <clears throat> and I ran at University of Arizona and was a two-time All-American. Yeah, so I run the 400. Mm -hmm. So let me read your bio real quick because you've done so much to be so young. So Gia is an American, American-born sprinter who sprints for Italy. She won the national title her at senior level. Uh, senior level means at a high level, guys. Uh, she also won two bronze medals at international senior level with the Italian, Italian national track relay team. Um, first off, G, I want to ask, how hard is it to to be a track runner? Like, seriously. <laughs> um, it's really hard, um, you know. I was thinking about this other day, a lot of other sports. I'm like, you know, I could do that. I could do that. I was thinking about tennis and I'm like, man, they're just hitting a ball back and forth. You know, like I could do that. Um, <laughs> but, you know, come to think of it, tennis is like a two hour match. And so it's pretty tough. But um, track is tough because it's all around conditioning. Um, I run the 400. so. Pretty much it's a lap of sprinting. So I really have to push myself every day to the limit, um, whether that's on the cardiovascular side, which is a lot of oxidative stuff that we do. I'm really pushing myself there. We do a lot of lactic acid training, which that kind of involves feeling nauseous quite often. And it's really tough. And in the weight room, it's even harder. We're always trying to lift more, lift bigger, you know. It's really mentally challenging. And I think over the years, I've really learned to love it and kind of forced myself to love certain things about it. Yeah. So I sprint a lot because I just think it's the best thing for your abs. So that's the only <laughs> reason I've sprinted. I'm not fast or anything. But I saw you post a video. I don't know if it, yeah, it was a video. And I think they're called like bounds where you like do these big long strides where you do like high knees. And yeah. So like, oh, I'm going to add that to my track workout. Yeah. So I went out to the track and I was like doing it. I was like, yo, this is extremely way harder than she was making it look. I couldn't like jump and get up and I had like no spring and no pop. And so yeah. how long did it take you? until you realized that you were world-class, like you're a really good track athlete. Was it high school? And, and how did you really know? So in high school, I played competitive soccer and I really wanted to play college soccer. That was my goal. Um, and then I, I did track and I realized that I was fast because of soccer. Um, I was always beating people to the ball. I never had a hard time with speed on the field ever. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of did track just to get in better shape. Uh -huh. And in uh, high school, I was a CIF champion in the 200. Uh -huh. I was a CIF champion in the 200 in the Southern California division, which is really competitive. Uh -huh. um, and so I kind of figured, you know, I'm pretty good at this. Maybe I should do this in college. And throughout college, it was pretty tough in the beginning. And then as I started dropping like a second off of my 400, I realized, you know, this could be a real thing. Um, I think I'm going to do this after after college and go, go professional. Yeah. And I think in college, I realized my talent level. and But I kind of knew in high school, too. <laughs> 
So do you miss soccer? I do. I really love playing soccer. It's fun and track is not fun. <laughs> I, you know, I find a lot of people who play different professional sports start out in soccer, like Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki, uh, Diana Taurasi played soccer. Oh, wow. In high school. I remember I was in high school and she was in high school and she was like world class at soccer and then decided to play um, uh, basketball as well. Uh, did you play any other sports besides soccer and run, running track? No, I'm not very like hand eye coordinated. So like, just show me where to go and I'll get there quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my husband actually played basketball at Georgia and we go and shoot sometimes and I'm just not good. <laughs> okay. That's so cool. So is he okay, so is he like massively taller than you? Yeah, he's six four and I'm five three, so uh, he's a foot taller. <laughs> so, running in the Olympics, you uh, were excited for the Olympics coming up. What? So, what's going on now? What? What's your plan? And are you sad? What's going on? So, I think it's complicated <laughs> yeah. because if the Olympics were to happen this year, there would be no spectators. You know the vibe would be off in a way. Um, and it's supposed to be a really happy moment and something we've all worked for for a really long time. Yeah. So I'm not upset about them being postponed, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm confused on what to do with my training right now because we're not really sure, like track athletes aren't really sure if there's going to be a professional season. And so, you know, running fast doesn't mean I'm always fit. I'm going to go out there and run fast. You know, you got to, you have to peak at a certain time and peaking matters and like programming your workouts matters. And so we're all kind of confused on what to do. Should we continue to do strength or should we build speed right now? So we're kind of just taking it day by day. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know, uh. I'll ask my dad kind of about that one. He's the genius when it comes to training. But I know certain things um, go away faster and certain things go away slower. Uh, I'll kind of ask him about that. So one of the books that we read in a book club that we have is by Seth Godin. It's called The Dip. And okay. what The Dip is is a time in our life where we're going to chase a goal. But The Dip is a time where everything just looks terrible we don't think we're going to be able to do this. You forget this. I hate track. I hate <laughs> soccer. I hate yeah. life at a time where everything just looks terrible. But what Seth Golden says is if we make an intention to get through the dip before we start, it makes it easier to get through it. So tell us about a time that you hit a rough patch, a dip um, in your life going um, to your goals uh, as an athlete. And how, how'd you get through it? Yeah, so in college, I actually, well, in high school, I tore my ACL and my meniscus. Um, yeah, and it came back to haunt me in college. Um, I think three or four years later, I just had really, really bad left knee pain. And there was no way I could do anything. And so I decided to get surgery, and I lost a bunch of weight. I lost a ton of muscle I lost a lot of progress and you know it's funny during that time you when you when something's taken away you kind of want to get back there and you want to fight really hard for that yeah. and so that's what I did and it really motivated me in a lot of ways it was my last year running track in college mm -hmm. and I was in the training room almost every day getting worked on doing rehab whatever and I remember coming back to the track, running on the track for the first time after being on the bike for, I don't know, three months. Mm -hmm. And it just felt so good. And that was a really rough time because I didn't know if I was going to be able to compete for my last year. Yeah. And I realized that it really made me fall back in love with it again. Yeah. And I think we will dip quite often in life. Like even right now, you know, I was at the track today mm -hmm. 
and I'm by myself, training by myself right now. Exclusive, exclusive. She is not following social distance, you guys. That no, I was by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, these next couple of months are going to be tough. Um, Cause I'm not with my coach. I'm training somewhat on my own, but we're going to get through it. And I was literally talking to myself at the track, you know, and I think sometimes that's what you have to do. Yeah. So I'm so glad you said that. Um, Cause I knew you are a mental monster when we were having a conversation and we we're talking about you speaking and you working on your book, which we got to get into that. Cause <laughs> yeah. downtime we can, we got time to get that done. But you said, uh, if I have to zone out, I could just zone out and get it done. Yeah. I was like, wow, because I knew what that does mentally. And I know how hard it is for my young athletes to do that. And I'm always trying to get them to zone out. But they're always thinking, am I messing up? Am I making a snake mistake? Am I going to get snatched out the game? Which that's one of the things you don't have to worry about in track. You know, you're going to be on the uh, field. But yeah. You just said how you were talking to yourself, and it's my assertion in uh, mental performance fields, uh, mental health fields, that it's really the context on which you tell yourself, which controls your thinking, which can tell your emotion, controls your emotions and your body sensations. So where did that come from? Where did you become aware of your self-talk? And what is your self-talk usually? Is it usually positive or usually negative? So I, I'm i really competitive, and so I think the self-talk really came from being competitive, you know, um, wanting to beat my training partner or wanting to win this rep or mm. in soccer. And when I played soccer, um, we had, like, a fitness coach. Yeah. And practice got really intense with him around, and so it was just like, I want to win this rep. And I always wanted to win. And I think that's really where where the self-talk came from. Um, You know, just saying I can do this. And then as you grow older, you really expand on your self-talk. And the faster you get in track, the more technical it gets. And so you have to really try to communicate with your body on, I want my hand to come up here and my arm to come back, things like that. Um, And... So my self-talk is majority of the time positive, but it can be negative with things like, oh, I don't know if I can hit this rep or if I can lift this weight. But when it comes to zoning out, I take the first two, three steps and then you kind of just go with it. You know, yeah. um, when I'm doing a time trial uh, at the track, you know, my heart is racing really fast before I'm really nervous. And I do some breathing exercises to slow my heart rate down. And I literally tell myself the first three steps are the only thing that matters. And then once you're in the run, you you don't think about anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 What were you going to say? No, I said if after the first three steps, then you're thinking to yourself, now I'm going to dust everybody out here. <laughs> Yeah, totally. totally. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Did you get a chance to watch any of uh, uh, The Last Dance yesterday? I did. I watched it all. <laughs> Do you see similarities of yourself and Michael Jordan? <laughs> I wish. I wish. So, yeah. Um, the only one similarity that I saw was that he would stay after practice and get more reps in. Yeah. And sometimes I like say to my coach, hey, let's do this. And then he'll do it. And everybody else like hates me. <laughs> so you like, yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, my gosh, we want to leave. And yeah, G is over here running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I just want to point out, I took some notes because you dropped the gym and probably don't even know that you dropped it. You said <laughs> the faster it gets, the more technical it gets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's clutch because that's not just and track with us in life. My mentor tells a story. He was a fighter pilot and he was talking about how when you are dog fighting in the airplane, the person who can see the furthest and maneuver uh, the fastest wins the war. 
Mm-hmm. And I think you just added to that. And I'm going to say not only move the fastest and see the furthest, but also as you get faster, you have to be more technical. And yeah. that all that little minute things that maybe people don't realize makes a huge difference at that mm-hmm. level. You can't just say, all right, I'm going to just out dig this person and, and beat them. Now I have to, you know, maybe hand to foot has to be perfect or yeah, head over foot or whatever. You know, I don't know. I only know a little bit. Yeah. Um, when did it get? super technical at what level was it only at this level was it high school or college it definitely starts in high school um track sprint well sprinting is all about angles right and Mm -hmm. and like how your foot hits the surface and how your shin when you're coming out of the blocks what angle your shin is at you know Mm -hmm. You don't want to be reaching out of the blocks. You want to be hitting back at the ground. So your shin needs to be at 45 degree angle and or so. And so it gets technical really early, mm-hmm. um, especially if you run events 100, 200, 400. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not. And how you said you can't out dig people when the faster, the higher level you get, you know, you have to stay poised and technically sound and really trust your fitness and rely on your mechanics. And I think, I think everybody at the elite level has talent, right? And so you really have to trust some of your, your talents that you already have um, rather than digging for everything. Um. What is a higher priority to you than uh, training? Is there anything that's a higher priority to you than training? Yeah, I mean, I I think that where my mental is on a daily basis, you know, when I, I believe in happiness, right? But I also really believe in, you know, having joy within yourself because mm-hmm. happiness is more so a choice and it kind of goes and comes and we're not always going to be necessarily happy. But I think that when, you know, I'm in a really good mental state, that's when it's easiest for me to show up and put in a lot of work. And by doing that, I do other things. Like I like horseback riding. Mm -hmm. Um, I really like surfing and I really like painting. And so those are my three biggest things that I do try to do one to two times per month. Mm -hmm. Um, Now I have more time to do those things in this quarantine. Um, So my, my level of like contentness has been really high. (laughs) Let's talk about surfing really quick. So I, I, I could swim, you know, Mm -hmm. but I hate swimming because the way I'm built, I have lean muscle, I sink. And so you, you have a bunch of lean muscle too. Do you sink in the ocean? No, you have you have to learn how to float. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I literally can't float. I promise. Yeah, I can sit on the bottom of a pole in Indian style. Yeah, I honestly really can't tell you how to float. Um, but when you're on a surfboard, it's much easier <laughs> to float. I have one of my young athletes on here. He plays uh, college basketball uh, right now. And so he always wants to know going back to getting in the zone again. Yeah. And so um, I don't know if you could deal with this, but a lot of basketball players, are mo- mostly work with basketball players, they deal with their coach. And mm-hmm. um, do you ever deal with, or have confrontations with your coach. And when you do, how do you kind of deal with that? So in college, I had a lot of confrontations with my college coach. Um, And she was a female coach. And in the beginning, we had a lot of difficulties. Um, Not, I wouldn't say difficulties, but she was trying to teach me things that I was resistant to. And I didn't even know. And, um, one thing to realize is that your coach is on your team, you know, they, 
want you to get better. They want to see you. And if you're on a team sport, obviously they want you to get better and work in that team dynamic. And so they're always at the best entrance of the team, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one thing that you have to realize is that this person is not against you. They are for you. Um, And we had a lot of conversations about training and I started buying in and I started really listening to her more and just being like, you know what, I'm just going to do what she says, see how this works for me. And I started running faster and we started getting along better and things just overall were better. Um, So I think that was the biggest thing for me is realizing, hey, like she's not not like my enemy, you know. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a big struggle for a lot of my athletes because there's so many much politics in basketball. I don't know if there's a lot of politics in in running Uh, my dad. Uh, played baseball at a high level and he saw us talk about and he went to run track he ran track at a at a west la but he talks mm-hmm. about that he loved track because there was no politics if i'm faster than you i'm yeah. faster than you and can't nobody argue that yeah. and that was one of the reasons he um uh, went out to track so i wanted to ask you let's say something happens in quarantine and Oh, you've done it before. Okay. All your muscle and everything's taken away, right? So when you had the injury, what was your process from start to finish from now I have to start all over? What was your process from going zero to a hundred and reinventing yourself? Cause I believe life is about reinvention. How did you do that? When I think when you focus on the little details, so say like when I hurt myself, I had to do a lot of like motor mechanics and I had to do a lot of really retraining my leg, how to run. Um, And I really focused on the details, right? And when we focus on the details like that, like almost like the little muscles in our leg rather than putting up a super heavy squat or, you know, focusing on literally like, my left glute firing how it should, right? And so I think those things make you so strong. I've realized the times that I've gone to rehab consistently Mm -hmm. and really put in the work for, I've had some like foot issues, really put in the work for strengthening my foot. It just like goes up your whole body and that whole chain reaction, it gets stronger, right? And so all that time was so valuable because I realized that it was just building to that heavier squat, you know? Yeah. I, um, I'm so cool. You're also giving away secrets. So I did, I, they got to pay for that. Um, <laughs> I talk about uh, so getting each glute to fire, hip uh, mobility, all of that stuff is clutch. And yeah. you can be a, what I, what I like to say as a conduit, of energy you could pick up energy from the ground and it makes you so much stronger it's insane yeah that when your body works how much stronger you get let's see we got a few uh people a lot of people on here a few comments oh, that's not a comment this guy mr b-hole official put her hot eyes okay <laughs> Pay attention mr b-hole she said she was married let's see who else we got here all right so anybody who's just joining i am interviewing Gia Trevisan, Olympic runner, because was going to run in the next Olympics until we all got quarantined. Um, so what high school did you go to, Gia? Uh, I went to Modern Day. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. knew it. Now we're going to get into some cool stuff. <laughs> were, were you there when my brother, my brothers, Gary Franklin, Kiala King, and uh, Tyler Lamb was there? Yeah, so I know Gary really well. Okay. Um, Kiala... We like weren't we were friends. We were friends. Um, he probably won't remember me, but Kiala's and, crazy. And, yeah, and then who did you say? Tyler Lamb. Yeah, he think he was a little bit older than me. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. There's like real legends that come out of modern day. Okay. <laughs> so now I see why you're so great. So how? What's the pressure of playing there? It's like 
because it's more tuned towards, or I don't know, I didn't go there. Is it more tuned towards the sport rather than than education? Because I know Tyler, I know how Tyler is. He yeah. No homework, and somehow he was passing them grades. <laughs> but oh. <laughs> really set up it, to help you uh, uh, in in your sport. Yeah. So it's obviously a really big sports school, um, but I do think that the academics are they were hard um yeah so I think I think it's a pretty well-rounded school Mm -hmm. and they really love their sports and I think their student athletes there's a lot of resources for them almost like being a student athlete in college you know Mm -hmm. you're having like a hard time with something they'll give you some tutors or whatever modern day was was great because if you were really good at something Everybody really liked you, right? And so I think at other schools, if you were really good at something, like if you were really nerdy or whatever, you would get teased, right? At Modern Day, it did not work like that. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you were like crazy smart and going to Harvard, it was just like, wow, like what an accomplishment, you know? Class, world class. Yeah. 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 So um, speaking on that, it's hard to resonate with um... – for lack of better words, average people who just, it's, you know, it's not, it's not bad to not be really good at something, but they're just not committed to being uh-huh. some, at something, you know. Um, one thing um, my dad would say is uh, some people are a man of many things, but masters of nothing. Is mm-hmm. it hard to resonate or be on a level or communicate with someone who just doesn't understand what you have to do the to to be at that level you know is it easy for you to still communicate with people or is it harder because I find it harder a little bit for me (laughs) well I think sometimes even my mom you know Mm -hmm. I'm at home right now during this quarantine um and she's like you're always working out you're always doing this and it's like I don't think she really realized like the time commitment that really goes into it. Generally, like I spend four to five hours a day, you know, at the gym or at the track. Um, And so sometimes it's hard to explain to people like how much goes into this. But I think almost all of us, we all have something in us that that drives us. And so you kind of just have to relate it to something that they're doing, you know, it's like, maybe somebody is working a really annoying nine to five job. And they don't want to get up for it every day, but they do, right. And so Mm -hmm. it's like, I'll tell them, well, you're doing the same thing, you're you're committing to something that's really tough, too. But you you just have to do it. So you do it, right. And that's how it is with me. It's like, maybe there's some days I I don't want to go to the track or, you know, this workout's really hard and I don't want to push through, but it's kind of like I've developed these habits. It's almost like I feel like a robot sometimes. Yeah. 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 So four to five hours a day. Wow. I do an hour and a half to two and people swear I'm at the gym all day. Yeah. But we don't want to do it, but it's just, it's just, you know, reaping the rewards is super cool. And yeah, it just kind of, um, it just kind of is what it is. Uh, tell us a quote that you live by. So let's see. There, there aren't really like specific quotes, mm-hmm. but the speech on the movie Any Given Sunday uh-huh. um, at the end of the movie, I really like that speech. Uh-huh. And it really motivates me. One speech or one quote that I do live by is um it's a bible verse i think it's 2 timothy 1 3 i can't remember um and it says like for god did not give us a spirit spirit of timidity but of power love and self-discipline and i really like that quote ever since i was like 15 16 Mm -hmm. i really like that quote and so i really try to live with power love and (laughs) self-discipline so that just uh, that just made me so happy. You're a believer. Um, yeah. 
we did an episode with a pastor. I'll send it to you. It was, it was amazing. You, yeah, I watched. I watched some of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's he's to me the best speaker in the world too. Um, so what is success in your opinion? What is success to you? If life was perfect, family's perfect, and everything's perfect, what is success for you? So I really focus a lot on the process, right? And so for me, success really means my one of my biggest fears is not living up to my potential or not living up to everything that I could give, right? Um, and so success really means like the, the person I become through all of this. Um, and that's really important to me. It's not so much always about the destination, even though track is very outcome based. <laughs> it's always like, if I don't run this time, then I didn't meet my goal, right? But all the times that I've had the most success is when I really focused on the day to day and the process. Um, and when you, when you look at like the destination, it's almost like fast forwarding and watching the water boil and it's not getting anywhere. Right. And so, um, when I'm focusing on every day, I get there and it's like, wow, I'm here. <laughs> And so for me, it's like the person that I become, really. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's so amazing. Um, so let's take it back a little bit. Let's talk about college. So how rough was it keeping up with everything in college, being away from family, keeping up with uh, um education but then at the same time working out four or five hours um how how was that and was it a hard transition for you it was most definitely it was hard um I think the hardest part is in season when you're traveling almost every week yeah. for meets and things like that um and I think you just have to study on the road, study in the plane, <clears throat> wherever you are, you know. Um, and I also gained freshman 15. <laughs> what? How did yeah. that work? But, but it wasn't from, like, eating. Like, I gained so much muscle because I had never lifted before. Okay. And, you know, some certain body types, like, I just put on muscle easily. And and it was not good. Um and so that it was slow really you down? Tough. what sorry it slow you down yeah it did um it's almost like really fast football players in high school when they go play in college and they try to run track they they put on so much muscle that it's track is just different you're you're lean you're not you're not like big big and strong necessarily you know yeah and so that was really tough for me especially when you're 19 years old, 20 years old. And, you know, body image is such a big thing for women. And it was just like, played a lot with my mental for sure. And I think it took two years to, to lose the weight, first of all, yeah. um, and to lose all that, like mental anxiety, um, it took a while. And so once I started losing weight, and I was I was happier and that's when I started losing weight um, and or losing like the muscle that I didn't need. Um, and you kind of just have to like bear through it for the first two years if it's hard, you know, or the first year. Um, but living away from family was not hard for me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I really liked being independent and I really liked, you know, living with roommates and friends. Yeah, that part dope. was great. Yeah, that's dope. That's the answer to nobody. I can go and come as I please. Yeah. Um, so touch on the body image part real quick. Do you struggle with that at all? Because you're so lean and muscular. And do you get hated on for being so for having such a nice body? Or did uh, how, what do you struggle with um, in that uh, realm? So now I I think I've really like moved 
past that. Um, and in the past, like I was kind of like, Oh, I don't want to lift heavy. Cause like, I don't want to get big. Right. Yeah. Um, but now it's kind of like, you know, I really like feeling really strong. I really like lifting heavy stuff. And so it's just like, and when that happened, like maybe like my arm gets a little bigger or whatever, but it doesn't necessarily bother me. Cause like for my sport, it, it requires me to be like muscular in a way. And I really appreciate that about myself now. Um, and I think I really learned to like love that body image, you know, and I think it just takes time and it takes a lot of realizing you don't have to look like this person or you don't have to look like this model and, um, and so forth. And we all have a different body image that we're born with or, or we develop, you know what I mean? Um, and I do think that if you want something like you can achieve that, uh, with exercise, <laughs> to be honest, you know, Yeah, just be disciplined and you can achieve it. But then also at the same time, just love where you are, love yourself and just, yeah. you know, I, I kind of struggle with it cause I never, I just never understood it until like, you know, got older and got around people. I never understood, um, image I just never understood image problems all yeah. confidence because just how I was raised so I'm yeah. really trying to have empathy and learn about that stuff as I as I move forward so anybody who just joined us I am interviewing Gia Trevison uh amazing Olympic runner medalist runs for Italy but from here um and you guys came in at the end where we are almost done so I want to ask my last question. Okay. Uh, is there anything that I should have asked you that you think everyone should know? Um, I think your goals take time. <laughs> they take discipline. Nothing is, is nothing worthwhile is easy. Right. And so just really being patient and really trusting and believing in yourself for the process and, I do say daily like affirmations to myself and I really believe there's a lot of power in speaking out loud and rather than just thinking it in your head, you know, you got to like say it and repeat it and what we put into our brains will become a habit um, and our thoughts control our actions. And so I think the battle is won and lost in the mind. And so you got to really train your mind to push through that process, push through those day to day things. And before you know it, you like reach your destination and you need a new one. <laughs> so true. So two, two points, guys, two next level points she made time. It takes time. Um, there are no unrealistic goals. There's only unrealistic time frames, and the battle is won and lost in your mind. Once you believe it, you can achieve it. And, um, uh, God has equipped you with everything you need. Once you believe it, it's it's done in your eyes, his eyes. It may not be done in other people's eyes, but we don't worry about the haters. We just keep <laughs> moving forward. Um, Gia, let the people know where they can follow you. Um, first off, before we get off, when is your book coming out? Give me a date. Um, what, what month is it? It's April. Let's say um, September or like November. September, November. Oh, I could, we could we could take that. You got any ideas yet? I do want to write about something. Um, surviving college. It's more so like for female athletes. Yeah. Um, but I do want to write about like my college experience for sure. Yeah, because yeah, they definitely need to hear and see you on stages everywhere, and they need to read your book because you're amazing. Okay, where can they find you? Okay, so I'm on Instagram. It's just at Gia Trevisan. I'm on Twitter at Gia or G underscore Trevs. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a Facebook page, but it's under my full name, which is Giancarla Trevisan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, those are my three platforms. And then actually, I'm starting a YouTube channel soon. So. So we have a, just real quick, we have a professional 
Okay. Uh, Italian basketball player on. She said, you're amazing. So I just wanted to make sure I let you know that. Um, do you have family in Italy right now struggling with this virus? Yeah, they're in Padova, um, okay. which is two hours east of Milan, which is like the big region where it got hit. Yeah. Um, so they're just staying inside. I mean, they're okay for now, but I think they're tired of it. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you guys for everyone who came on the live. As you know, we'll be sharing this on all the platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, Instagram Live. Thank you guys, everybody who came on. I hope you guys enjoyed this show as much as we enjoy creating it for you. Again, thank you, Gia. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me, Roy. Thank you.